Can multitasking shrink your brain? And if so, is there anything that you can do to stop it? And when people engage in a lot of multimedia multitasking, you can actually see it in their brain. The pe brain chemistry changes and the part of the brain that really is focused on focused attention, that part of your brain will shrink. That's Frederica Fabridius, Wall Street Journal best-selling author, neuroscientist, and keynote speaker. Listen, as a long-time multitasker, I love catching up on my favorite Netflix series du jour while walking on the treadmill, while trying to respond to all the incoming messages on my phone simultaneously. So you better believe that seeing Frederica's LinkedIn post sent me down a neuroscience and productivity rabbit hole. I wanted to get to the bottom of this, so I went on an investigation. I wanted to learn how do things like multitasking affect your brain? Can your brain actually shrink? How does this affect daily life? Does it affect things like attention and focus? And of course, what can you do about it? You might want to stick around till the end because what I found goes so much deeper than just multitasking. Let's get into the nooks and crannies. For the past 30 days, I've read through the studies of several researchers to figure out ways to strengthen this part of the brain. The thing is, unless I did something about it, this part of my brain would atrophy, meaning it would shrink. Now quickly, before we get to the tips, let's have a nerdy neuroanatomy moment and learn about the brain. This is the brain. The human brain has about 100 billion neurons and it runs on about 20 watts. To put this into context, one of the world's most powerful supercomputers, the Oak Ridge Frontier, needs a million times more power, about 20 megawatts. So it's cool just how energetically efficient our brains are. There are four major components, the brainstem and cerebellum, the limbic system, white matter, and the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the folded outer surface. Now the anterior cingulate cortex or ACC has been shown to be associated with various psychological processes, emotion regulation, pain perception, and cognitive control. Interestingly, the ACC is also the region in the cortex that's associated with motivation. So something weird happens to the ACC when we multitask between emails, YouTube, Netflix, Instagram, TikTok, or lay in bed doom scrolling all day. More specifically, a study found that media multitasking, that's when you use multiple forms of media at the same time, is linked to negative cognitive and social effects. If you think of that's interesting, the study also found that higher media multitasking scores are associated with smaller gray matter density in the anterior cingulate cortex, or the ACC. Yikes. Intuitively, brain shrinkage doesn't sound good. And while that isn't always true, in fact, there's something called synaptic pruning that happens when you sleep, where your brain selectively eliminates or prunes weaker connections and strengthens higher quality connections. If we go back to Frederico, we see that the ACC, which is responsible for for things like attention and executive control. It's no wonder why we feel so drained after a long period of multitasking. The good news, if you do want better productivity, focus, and overall brain health, there is something you can do. First, sometimes it helps to know what not to do so you can get clear on what to do. So first things first, if you wanted to fry your ACC and make it as shrunken as possible, you'd want to avoid hard things. Never try to actually regulate yourself. You'd never actually take accountability for your own actions. Actions. Instead, you'd shift the blame and the responsibility to everything and everyone else in the outside world. You'd stay glued to your phone, hopelessly dependent on it, endlessly doom scrolling, and only really getting out of bed for basic survival tasks. Now, if you're watching this video and you've made it this far, you'll likely want to do something about this. And you'll likely want to know that without the ACC, which is vital to self-efficacy, you'd be at the mercy of every whim, indulging in every pleasure, no matter how bad for you it might be. And this makes sense because in today's world, especially with technology, AI, and the ability to access everything right at our fingertips, it may be shrinking our ACC, especially if we're constantly switching between platform to platform to get that next jolt. Now, I don't want to over-exaggerate or say that technology or social media is some kind of boogeyman or that we should all disconnect and go live in the woods, but the way we're using technology or conducting daily tasks may be doing damage. So what can we do about it? This topic hits close to home because it's something that I struggled with until I made some changes. First, I I want to talk about being uncomfortable on purpose. And this might be challenging at first, but stick with it. When you're about to head to the gym or maybe start studying for a big test like the MCAT, you might notice some resistance. Maybe your brain starts to scream all the reasons why you can't do that task right now. And it might even be so clever as to disguise these excuses as valid reasons. Yeah, I know I should go to the gym, but it'd be horrible to get out of bed when I'm so cozy. Or yeah, I know I should start those practice problems from my 300 page workbook, but I still have tomorrow. Observational studies show 
elevated levels of anterior mid cingulate cortex activity in hard tasks compared to easy tasks. So there's greater activity when we have to overcome a lot of resistance. So basically to grow your ACC, you want to argue with that voice that tells you all the reasons why you should avoid that hard task. Do activities that aren't easy. Voluntary discomfort is key. And the next time you resist and crack open your laptop to start the report that you've been dreading or get your butt to the gym, your ACC may just thank you for helping it grow. Next is taking personal responsibility. This means not blaming everything around you and doing what's good for you, like managing your time. One example of how to manage your time more effectively is the Pomodoro technique. It involves breaking your work up into intervals, typically 25 minute intervals separated by short breaks. And fun fact, the name Pomodoro actually comes from the tomato shaped kitchen timer that Francesco Cirillo, who developed the technique, used as a university student. And if you remember this graph from earlier, you'll recall that higher medium multitasking scores are associated with smaller gray matter density in the anterior cingulate cortex. So if you feel like you need to give your brain a break after a long social media bender, or if you want to stop this shrinkage, consider monotasking. For example, if you're sitting down to do your work or working out at the gym, consider making it a no phone zone. You're there to lift some weights, study for the MCAT, run around the block, outline your important presentation without the noise of Netflix, endless notifications and updates. Or the next time you're tempted to go back and forth in the group chat while watching the next episode of your favorite historical romance, or try to squeeze in a few emails while you check out that new training video, try a one task at a time approach. The good news is that it does get easier to overcome this resistance and do these hard things as this gets ingrained, causing changes in the brain in a process called neuroplasticity. These changes might involve the size of, say, your anterior cingulate cortex or in the receptors of your brain. For example, reducing the dopamine receptors in your brain, which means less stimulus is needed to achieve the same pleasure. Next. Did you know that there's something that you can do to achieve your goals, even if they're challenging? To do that, you may want to check out how to trick your brain into doing hard things. Click here to learn more about how to get yourself to do something, even if you don't feel like it. And by the way, if you did find this video helpful, feel free to like, subscribe, or share it with one other person who could use a boost in their journey to success. Thanks for watching. I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Bye for now, but not forever.